So the strengthening part, what I find with people who have, you know, squatting forward like this, they're either rounding or butt wicking, they've got a, quite a number of things going on. There's usually a common theme. And what I'd work on, if that's you, if you're the person who's sort of squatting forward like that and not holding an upright neutral sort of position when you squat, I work on abdominals and hamstrings. Okay, so the abdominals and hamstrings, think of like if you're losing this position here, your hamstrings are usually a bit weak, you'll probably find, oh yeah, they can do deadlifts, but how good are they on hamstring curls? You may actually find that the actual bulk of the hamstrings are actually not as strong as a few others, their glutes, if you like. They might be really strong lifting, but their hamstrings are not as good as their glutes. They're lifting all with their glutes. So usually that's part and parcel. Hamstrings and low abdominals. Those two things are usually sort of weak, which just lets them just flop in that position. And that's why those sort of people, this might be you, you're good at deadlifts, but no good at squats. So you can hinge forward fine, because you're just sort of really just moving at one joint and you're using your glutes all to do it. And you don't need a massive amount of abdominals to actually do a deadlift. You need big, strong back muscles and big, strong glutes. And what gets left behind is the hamstrings and the abdominals. And those people will struggle with squats. Okay, so that's the first thing. Let's get you working on hammies, working on abdominals. The other thing I want you working on is because of those two things, you're usually jacked up and tight in your lower back and you're tight in your hip flexors. So let's work on the strengthening things first and the stretching things second. So strengthening wise, what I'll get you doing is doing a ball roll out. Pretty easy stuff. And remember, this is for rehab. You know, people who are, uh, you know, way down the track and do those wheel rollouts for strengthening. But if you're one of those people that is rehabbing and you're in that phase of knee injuries and you're rehabbing that and you're rehabbing lower back stuff, you want to do things that are appropriate for your level. So I would work on ball rollouts. Now these are like a front plank, but it's a bit dynamic. So what I'd start off with, and again, you might actually look in the mirror and see where your angles are. As you start off in that same position like you were in a sit back, and you roll that ball forward, but your body moves with it, and you've got to adjust what happens in your pelvis at the same time. So you're working on abdominals. When you come forward like this, you're working on your abdominals and low abdominals and really trying to hold that and then pull back. But it's a nice dynamic movement, which is completely related to the squat. I mean, the squat is dynamic movement. So just doing a static plank is probably not going to be enough to teach you how to use this muscle system through movement. Planks are great. Do those as a base. But do this as your sort of movement strength control, if you like. So this position, a few things you've got to think about. When you roll this ball forward, don't just leave your hips behind and roll that forward and do that. At the same time, don't just sink your hips forward and lean on the ball. As that ball rolls, your hips move at the same time, you've got to adjust what is happening with this lower back. I want you to keep that lower back in neutral, and the way you do that is a bit of pelvic floor on, a bit of transversus, and then really working on that rectus abdominis, and then bringing those obliques in to try and control that. Not holding your breath, go to a bit of a shake, and then bring it back keep all those abdominals on. So it's graded as you go. So abdominals on say 30% now, as they go forward, sort of go up to 40, I get more 50, 60, 70, 80, and then bring it back again. You're not gonna try and max it out to 100 and hold your breath, you don't need to do that. But as you go forward and back, you're trying to switch your abdominals on more and then on less as it's graded, okay? So that ball rollout is gonna be really good to try and get some low abdominal strength down here. Second thing I'd work on is hamstrings. Now, like I said, oh, I'll just do deadlifts. You could do that. If you're doing Nordics, well, that's more of a higher level thing, doing Nordics. You're probably not in that rehab phase. If you're just doing rehab work, say you've got a knee injury, you've got a back injury, you're probably not going to be doing Nordics. So I would work on banded knee flexion. Now, if you're in the gym, of course, you can just do gym work. Okay, get on the, if you find that machines are better, just go on a hamstring curl machine, but do it single leg because then you can feel the difference between left and right. Because remember, maybe you've got a knee injury on one side and the other. So you want to work on your hamstring work on one side more than the other. Not just two at the same time. Use a band, double it around if you can. If it's too much, go down to single, but if you can handle a double, you might have to do maybe a light band. Whack that around the back of your shoe 
So wearing shoes with this one is good because it just hooks on. Back of that shoe, and then you simply just come forward and you're gonna go and do a simple, easy hamstring curl like that, okay? Don't be full, these are quite hard because as you come up here, it gets harder, 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 and it really works on that mid-belly strength. Just make sure with your lower back, this is where you work on your form again because you are working on form with squats. So think about, okay, I want to be a bit more neutral, okay, which you, know, you may switch your glutes on with that, and then try and keep that position as you go up and not shift or shear or arch your back when you do it. So it's trying to keep control and then pulling that up and work on that strength of that hamstring to try and help you with your squat, I mean there's the strength of your hamstring in the squat. So these are your first sort of two ones I'll just start working on straight away to help you with that form and technique. Now stretching wise that's pretty easy stuff. Hip flexors are easy. Remember we're sort of trying to lengthen out through here if it's tight, okay? You're not sort of you may find you don't have too much length, it's just the tension that you want to try and reduce. So working on your hip flexor, and I've done a few videos of hip flexors, but make sure you're not just sort of lunging forward and just doing that, okay? Because you're probably not stretching other things you want. What I want you to focus on is staying upright in that position there and not going forward so much, and then trying to do a bit of a tilt. And hey, guess what? works on your hamstring, okay? So you can activate your hamstring by doing a posterior tilt here, so that's on, which is what you want, it makes sense, and that actively or inhibits that tightness in the front, so you get a reduction in that sort of tension in the front already just by switching on a bit of glue and a bit of hamstring and posterior driving that pelvis, you'll get the stretch just standing there, kneeling there, I should say. From that, if you can try and keep that on, and keep that on, and then glide forward, you'll feel more stretch. Okay, and you get the point, you go, oh, that's probably enough. And you may find that goes down quite a bit, and there's more than just your hip flex or psoas in there. There's a bit of rectus femoris, there's a bit of groin going on there. There's a few other things that may be part of the equation of tightness in the front, which is affecting the movement of your pelvis when you squat, and the restriction when you squat. So working on that simple stuff, one minute, three sets, work on that each side. And again, you can do that single-sided, okay? And the last one is the one for your lower back, which is a lot of the time, people who are tight in their squats will really struggle with this, but it's such a great one to free you up, to give you that mobility through range so you can actually activate muscles to get that form correct. So, go into what I call a QO extension stretch with this one here. So, what I would try and aim for is having this knee permanently bent, all right? Don't try and straighten it out and do that. We're not trying to stretch your hamstrings. We're trying to stretch your lower back. So take your hammies out of the equation, bend it up. Reaching forward, grabbing your foot, knee on the inside of that arm there. This arm is simply just pushing that down and locking it down. Those of you who've got really tight hips will find that your knee's way up here and you're going, what's going on there? And you sort of can't get it down. That's an indication that you've got really stiff hips something you need to work on. But if you can get that down or just hold it there, it's also an anchor point for your shoulder to push backwards and rotate. Because you're trying to rotate your upper body around to one side and keep it there. And then you might want to straighten that out a little bit to get a bit of tension on there. And then use this front arm to pull yourself down on an angle. So you're shortening up the distance between your ribs and your thigh. So you're trying to get that movement there better and hold it there. And then don't make the mistake, you're trying to not sink in. You've got to keep pushed back and rotate. And you're going to feel this sometimes everywhere. It's, you'll be a, feel a bit of oblique, maybe a bit of extensors, a bit of a QL. That whole sort of quadrant there at the back on the left, you're trying to stretch out because that's the stuff that's tight when you go into your squat. And you'll find that the more you do that, and obviously both sides, you'll find that you'll have more freedom when you go into your squat. A little bit less resistance everywhere. Now, if there's less resistance through that range, you've got a better chance of activating the right muscle groups to keep your form, which in the end of the day, that's the whole trick. Keeping that squat form correct, so then when you load it, you're not gonna cause any problems. Hope that helps, see you next time.